multi-vector integration is Kazakhstan's chosen course of development in the program Single Market. On July 6, Kazakhstan once again celebrated the birthday of its capital city. This event is the theme of our today's program titled Astana Reload Center. Hello, my name is Pavel Koktyshev. In today's program, is ready to the Astana Forum breathes life into a new entity, Eurasian Economic Union Business Council. New urban motifs of Kazakhstan's capital. Astana Minsk partnership within Eurasian integration. And coming right up, current trends, the project Astana Financial Center. The legislative framework has already been established. The president of Kazakhstan has signed a decree on the creation of an international financial center, Astana, that will be housed by the International Expo 2017 exhibition. It is not a secret that there are divergent options with respect to this decision. Some of the representatives of Kazakhstan's banking sector do not understand all the nuances of the functioning of this center. They are concerned about how the legislation of Kazakhstan will be applied in the case of the new financial center. For example, with regards to arbitrage and taxation in the banking system. However, the prospects that this project Astana Financial Center promises are quite convincing arguments in its favor. After Expo 2017, an infrastructure that is unique in terms of architecture and logistics will be established in Astana. By the way, concerning the functional use of its platform, today there are many divergent offers. In my opinion, the option of an international financial center is the most optimal. Here, aside from the availability of a highly modern infrastructure, we should consider Astana's status as well, the youngest and most rapidly developing capital in the world, including in terms of a reputable international dialogue platform. With the project Financial Center Astana, international experience will be drawn upon as well, which will be used in its work. As a foundation, there are plans to use the experience of Dubai, which, as many know, achieves substantial success in this respect. The activities of the new center will be framed by English law. This entails a preferential tax regime and an independent financial court, which will be staffed by foreign specialists. One important feature is that English will be used as the official language on the territory of this new institution. This concerns international regulatory enactments, which will be drawn up and implemented in English. All these prospects speak of the importance of this project on an international level. In the first quarter of this year, trade turnover between Kazakhstan and its Eurasian Economic Union partners, in comparison with the similar period of last year, decreased by 20 percent and amounted to 3.4 billion U.S. dollars. From geo-economic to problems connected with coordination of businesses within the Eurasian territory. That is why the recently established informal entity, Eurasian Economic Union Business Council, is very fitting. Under the conditions of integration, the most mobile sector of the economy are entrepreneurs. They have the potential to realize large projects, to express interest in the opening of joint enterprises, in order to unite efforts in the production of competitive goods. For now, there are projects that show their potential and capacities, but there still isn't a set of Eurasian business corporations, and they have to appear. According to Kazakhstan's business associations, the phrase for now is applicable not only to large market players. The potential of Eurasian small and medium businesses has not been unlocked yet. One of the reasons behind this is that a large share of the EEU norms and technical regulations is developed in Moscow. That is also where the meetings of the advisory council take place. Let us make a decision. We are more important and have a bigger industrial potential. I think that these are not even arguments in business cooperation and business partnership. Kazakhstani business has taken the initiative into its own hands. A proposal was made to form a working group for evaluating the regulatory impact. We believe that this is the most important instrument of improving the quality of the regulatory mechanisms on the national level. Chairman of the National Chamber became an official member of this entity. Thus, we have the opportunity to already evaluate the progress at this early stage and introduce our own proposals. 
During the 8th Astana Economic Forum session, Eurasian Integration Business Opportunities, another initiative of Kazakhstan's National Chamber of Entrepreneurs was adopted. The creation of a Eurasian Economic Union Business Council, national bodies which unite the entrepreneurs of their respective countries and defend their interests, will set the tone at this new organization. Meetings will be held within the format of a multilateral dialogue. Also, the Business Council envisions the possibility of meetings on the highest level with the heads of states. This will have a serious impact because we get an opportunity for direct communication and establishment of a consolidated community of all five countries. A quick round of questions that was held during the 8th Astana Economic Forum revealed what issues should be considered first by the Business Council. The information communication policy that we are conducting is not sufficient. Access of producers of goods and those that offer services on the single market that is forming. In order to it to be able to analyze first these barriers in each sector and group of products. One way or another, the Business Council will give an opportunity to the entrepreneurs of the Eurasian Economic Union to directly discuss issues that impede healthy competition and to influence the situation. One of the important conditions of economic development of the city is the level of comfort. And this is not only concerning the average daily needs. Potential investors and companies which participate directly or indirectly in the business sphere want to live and work in an environment that is favorable in all aspects, including from the point of view of smart technologies. What steps are being taken in Astana? The prehistory of Astana begins with the development of the left bank. Right now, it is hard to believe, but two decades ago, there wasn't a single modern building or administrative business center in the capital, which we can see so well from this spot. In essence, that was when the contours of a smart city were drawn up, because the concept for the capital city took into consideration those factors on which the future of Astana depends. The first task that was set was to build from scratch an administrative business center. Its role was to become the trademark of the young capital. The achievement of this goal was relegated to the newly created entity, Astana New City. In 2002, by the presidential decree, a special economic zone was created for the purposes of developing the construction of the left bank and accelerating the city's development. The best architects of the world were attracted for the project of the city, which in a way symbolizes the crossroads of the east and west, the idea of the cosmos and the great steps. This includes the genius Norman Foster, and this is the result. Another component of Smart Astana are the innovative enterprises. These are also based on the left bank of the Ishim River within the border of the special economic zone, Astana New City. At the moment, there are 55 projects. 21 of these projects concern production of goods. These are plants that are ready for use. Nine of the projects entail participation of international partners. Implementation of the Smart City principles was a new stage of development of Astana. For the realization of this idea, a special company was set up, Astana Innovations. In order to accelerate the process of implementing smart city principles, Astana Innovations contracted an international advisor. Pricewaterhouse Coopers is one of the big four was chosen, which after conducting a comprehensive analysis of our city, developed a draft of the roadmap, which was approved by the mayor's office. Tana has been successful in doing is actually bringing as many experts from different parts of the world to collaborate and innovate together uh, by creating uh, the leadership through the mayor's office, the city of Astana, creating uh, Astana Innovation uh, has been uh, a good tactic. Uh, but overall, the strategy still boils down to having the right governance, the right program management. And this is where Astana probably needs to mature a little bit more. Today, within the framework of this project, a smart community has already formed itself in Astana. It encompasses a smart common payment center, smart transport, smart school, smart clinic, smart housing and public utility system and smart parking. In order to use these services, a person has to have a common city resident card. 
This model is being implemented gradually, sector by sector. But the city guests already note that Astana is making steps forward in order to create a comfortable environment for them. Here, social infrastructure complements the economic infrastructure and thereby standards of living increase. As a mayor, to see the city of Astana and the future that is happening right here, and the innovation and the vision and the growth, I think you have a very exciting future. In a year and a half, Kazakhstan's capital will become the center of attraction of smart technologies, united by the theme of Expo 2017, Future Energy. One of the most memorable moments of this event will be seeing the new Astana, Zulfiya Timirgalieva Astana, exclusively for single market. Astana and Minsk. Astana and Minsk. The distance between the main cities of Kazakhstan and Belarus is 2,935 kilometers. Astana is located in Central Asia, Minsk in Eastern Europe. Each city has its own starting point and history of establishment. What connects these two cities today? Our correspondent in Minsk, Dmitry Dvoynev, brings us the story. The larger picture is best seen from a distance. The fruits of partnership between the two capitals are quite obvious. That is why nothing is standing in the way of the development of business relations between the two Eurasian integration member countries. Everything is as it is in life. When two big families maintain warm relations, the friendship of the two households is considered to be very tight. Kazakhstan and Belarus, under the new conditions of cooperation, are allies in a common Eurasian space. And of course, integration itself requires familial friendship. Much time has passed since both capitals became centers of official meetings. Talks with the participation of heads of states were held in Minsk, and the agreement on the creation of the Eurasian Economic Union was signed in Astana. A businessman from Minsk, Alexander Shakutin had the opportunity to take part in this symbolic event and to once again delight the rapid growth of Astana. A city was established which impresses everyone by its architecture, its beauty and its cleanliness. This is truly a European type of capital of which any country would be proud. By the way, the city's atmosphere and its favorable business climate also played an important role in Shakutin's decision to establish the central office of its company here in Astana. Vyacheslav Vinik also intends to visit Astana more often. He represents the interest of the Confederation of Industrialists and Entrepreneurs of Belarus. At the 8th Astana Economic Forum, he took part in the creation of the Business Council of the Eurasian Five. The scope of issues is expanding and requires more coordinated activities, particularly of public unions, associations of the five countries. The trend of expansion of cooperation between the main cities of the two countries is also discernible in the sphere of new industrial technologies. For example, the theme Future Energy of the Expo 2017 exhibition which would be held in Astana, provided an impulse to joint projects on production of energy-saving products. I think that we will have the most high-quality LED technologies for reasonable prices, and this will be of benefit for all the countries. The National Airline Company of Belarus also made its contribution to the strengthening of the business bridge between the countries. Initially, its flights from Minsk to Astana had a seasonal schedule, three to four summer months. Gradually, their frequency increased. Having put some efforts, we managed to increase the frequency of flights from two to three flights per week to one flight every day. Both countries have been working within the format of the integration for a little over a year and a half. And today, new opportunities emerged for its development. This can be seen in the example of such a prospective opportunity as the trans-border windows. Within the Eurasian economic space, Minsk is the most western capital and Astana the most eastern. And there are a lot of forces of attraction between these two poles. Attraction which establishes a field for closer integration of Belarus and Kazakhstan. That's all for today. As a reminder, all our episodes are available online on www.kazakh-tv.kz. Until next time on Single Market.